So these are thousands of individuals um, who currently reside in Antioquia in Colombia and uh, they, some of these individuals, about 1500 individuals, carry a single mutation in presenilin 1 that predisposes them to develop Alzheimer's disease. Um, these individuals, they all come from a single ancestor um, and uh, we've been able to, to measure or to uh, follow them for many years, so we sort of know what, what the clinical progression of the disease is. And so that's very unique about our population, right, that we're able to know who's going to develop Alzheimer's disease. In our case, because individuals with this mutation are almost 100% likely to develop Alzheimer's disease. So basically we know if you have the mutation, you're going to develop Alzheimer's disease, and they usually start showing symptoms around the age of 44. So far, our findings have been um, very consistent with those uh, of sporadic Alzheimer's disease, which, which means that what we found, what we find, applies to those, to most of the people who end up developing probable Al or being diagnosed with probable Alzheimer's disease, and that's extremely important, right? Because I mean, if what we find applies only to our population from Colombia, that's great. We're helping thousands of people, but what we find if we can apply that to those who develop sporadic Alzheimer's disease, that means we can help millions of people around the world. And, you know, that's huge. We're not only able to look at cognition, but we're also able to look at structural changes, functional changes, amyloid aggregation, pet, uh, tau aggregation. So we're really able to look at Alzheimer's disease from a whole lot of different perspectives instead of just one. When I first started graduate school, I was very interested in studying memory. Uh, I just found memory very, just very fascinating. You know, just imagining what my life would be without my memories was, I, I just can't even imagine how that, that would be like. Um, and so I thought studying Alzheimer's disease was, you know, a great population to look at memory. Um, but with time apart, you know, I went from just loving memory to just loving working with this population. Um, just interacting with them, just showing me how much need there was for more research in this area. You know, it's just really sad when you get the, the news that someone has Alzheimer's and you just feel like your hands are tied, you know, you don't know what to do, you can't hear it, you can't, you can't slow it down. Um, you have to, you know, work with it and just provide a lot of support. Um, so that's really what drew me to this, just the, just the thought of, think, of, you know, I can actually help people in the future either, you know, stop this or I can contribute to at least slowing it down.